Hi everybody, very good evening and a warm welcome to V and Light. How are you? What's up? Am I audible and visible? Hello, Captain Jack. Hi, Nandini. Nandini, how are you? What's up? What's up? I hope I am live. Yes, I am live. All right. Uh, so basically, I'm really, really sorry. I was actually supposed to go to the office, but then it started raining very heavily uh, in Bangalore. And I could not get any Uber auto or anything. So I had to take it from class. I mean, I have to take it from my home today uh, but uh, it's okay i think Hannah, i i think what we have to do is actually study so we are going to study so uh, i don't see many students go go quickly call up your friends everyone go go quickly call up your friends let's start with coordination uh, compounds i think it is uh, one of the uh, tough chapters in, in in ncrt in our syllabus isn't it yeah so quickly go and call up your friends everyone can i have more people do home tour. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm actually really tired. Plus, my home is right now very dirty. So, I cannot do that. Maybe next time you follow me on Instagram, I'll give you a home tour in my Instagram, okay? <laughs> Not here. Not here. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Shall we start? What happened? Uh, why is uh, such less students? So, less students. What happened? Nobody is coming in. Okay, so basically today we are going to start with coordination compounds and guess what we are not going to learn just from the top, you know, we are actually going to zoom into it and we are since we are starting from the scratch and since we have not learned the inorganic chemistry. So I think it is my duty to tell you all that from where does the coordination compounds actually start and from where does it come from. So we will see how much we can complete but most probably I think only I, I think Today, we will only be able to complete till valence bond theory, okay? Is that okay, everyone? Hello, Singham. Hello, everyone. So, let's start, okay? Now, as you come in, as you come in, do not forget to also, you know, do not forget to also like the session because uh, it's, it's kind of important for us, right? It is kind of important for us. So, let's take a look at it. Since you are here already, don't forget to like. And if you like this session, then do not forget to share it with your friends as well. And uh, moving on, I'm guessing that most of you by now, you already know me. I am your uh, chemistry expert in this channel. Yes, be in light. And I'm your master teacher of Vedantu. Right, all of these you already know. I think let's not waste time because it is already a very, very, very important chapter. I think we should start. So what do you all say? Please, Hindi mein boliye na ma'am, humko jada comfortable ho gaya. Okay, Arya, you have to understand that this is the English channel, sweetheart. Yes, this is V in Light. V in Light is an English channel. So, I'm really sorry. I'm really, really, really sorry. You will have to follow other channel where, you know, you can go to Vedantu Jai channel. Yes, there is Vedantu Jai channel. Aap wahan chale jaiye, wahan pe aapko Mohit Rai, sir. <coughs> he will be teaching you in Hindi, okay? But here I'll have to teach you in English because this is this channel is only for English. Okay, this channel is only for students who are in English. I also think that my internet is uh, acting a little crazy, right? My internet is probably acting a little crazy. Is it lagging, everyone? Is it lagging? Oh no. Is it lagging? No, I guess not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. IUPAC nomenclature and all I will complete. Nomenclature I will complete. I will only reach till valence bond theory probably because it's a really, really huge chapter, right? So I don't think I'll be able to complete all that uh, CFT and all of that today only. But don't worry, we will complete that on Monday, okay? We will complete that on Monday. Today we will do till valence bond theory. So shall we start? Let's start everyone. Can I get some thumbs up or la 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 in the chat box just so that I know that everyone is ready and please do keep a notebook with you so that whatever I say you can practice and you can make a note of it otherwise you know coordination compound is something that you forget also very easily All right so let's start now first thing that we have to study is before even before we go to coordination compound tell me something have you heard about salts right have you heard about salts now you know what normally the salts that we use right the table salt, the common salt and all of these, right? Those are your simple salts, yes? Now, salts can be of two types. One is your simple salt, yes? One is your simple salt. And the other one is your double salt or your coordination compound, okay? Yes, all right? Or your double salt or your coordination compound, yes? Now, what is the difference between all of these? What is the difference between these two? 
simple salt what can you give me a simple example of simple salt or the salts that you know of the salts that you know of what, what is the example of a simple salt tell me tell me increase the volume bacha i can hear myself very properly can you see if something is wrong with your internet yeah can you see if something is uh, wrong with your internet but just just check once no NaCl very good okay NaCl is the most common example that we can take now what if i dissolve NaCl in water what will happen if i dissolve NaCl in water don't you think that it will form Na plus Cl minus right it will form Na plus Cl minus so from here can we understand that the simple salt will give you one kind of cation and it will give you one kind of anion yes it's very simple very simple right yes i will i will singam let me come there yeah i'm i'm building the whole story i'm telling you the story yes right everyone yes so it will give you one kind of cation it will give you one kind of anion that's it that's my simple salt very simple right but when i come to the double salt or coordination compound by double salt what can i understand or what can i imagine i can probably imagine that there are two salts which are existing together yes can i imagine that there are two salts that are existing together yes now what if i take this example let's say okay i can take this example of let's say Ooh, how is my phone ringing so sorry how is my phone ringing yes okay uh, let's take the example of okay this here okay let's take this example okay now do you see that there are two salts do you see that there are two salts yes do you see that there are two salts here one one now in this case what are the uh, what are the ions that will come up what are the ions that will come up probably nh4 plus yes right correct then we will probably have fp2 plus right and probably we will also have so4 two minus so do you see that there are more than one kind of cation or maybe more than one kind of anion do you see that do you see that here yes so these kind of these kind of things are called as your double salt or coordination compounds yes what are they called as they are called as double salt or coordination compounds so can i write it here that more than one kind of cation or more than one kind of anion yes can i write that is this clear everyone is this understood everybody now from here do we understand that these kind of things will be called as coordination compounds now i saw study and only yes study and only has given me one more example see k f e c n 6 right f e c n 6 yes study uh, study and only has given me this example now one more thing one more thing take a look at it you know when i put this in water okay when i try to dissolve this in water do you know what i'll get i'll, I'll see that this will break yes i will get k plus but do you know that this fe and cn you will not even get to see you will not even see the presence of it yes now these are not simple right these are not simple see nacl was absolutely simple dissolve it na plus cl minus that's it bas right the work is done absolutely done but here when i dissolve this i see that ah k plus i see but where is fe cn nobody will know they are not even going to show you so here this is a complex behavior right do we understand that this is a complex behavior everyone can i get some yes no anything hello interact <laughs> interact please interact yes now one more thing that you have to understand am i the only one who is not able to see the chat or you guys are chatting are you guys chatting here no what's going on anyway all right so yes okay cool i think i am the one who is not able to see it chalo anyway all right no problem so here is one more thing note it down everyone note it down everybody in this case when we say this complex salt double salt coordination compounds right in this case one more thing that's very important is take a make a note please write it down that when you dissolve them yes when you dissolve them in water they do not dissociate completely to give all their constituents simple ions they are not and that is why we saw that k plus we got it but fe and cn we did not even get to know it right we did not even get to know it now coming to what is a coordination compound or what is a coordinate bond somebody had asked me here yes yes nishchit absolutely right right 
Now, what is coordination compound? Somebody has asked me. So, let's see here. Okay, what is coordinate bond? Let's take a look at it. I'm going to make myself really small now. Okay, I'm going to make myself really small. So, what is your coordinate bond, everyone? Take a look at it. Now, do you know this uh, covalent bond? How many of you know? Do you all know what is a covalent bond? Everybody? Do you guys know what is a covalent bond? Yes, what is covalent bond? Covalent bond is basically if I draw it like this and then if I draw it like this, then probably both of them have one one unpaired electron and they will both share, right? They will both make a bond, correct? Yes, donates a lone pair of electron, absolutely right, great. Okay, mutual sharing of electron. Kind of like, you know, in history, uh, in the lower grades, we read about barter system. Do you remember barter system? How the barter system, barter system do you remember? Yes, everyone, yes. Yes, Oli Chanda, very recently, very recently, I have started teaching class 11th and 12th. Yes, very recently. Barter system, right? Can we can we take this example of barter system where, uh, you know, where, you know, the colonizers, they used to come and they were like, okay, we will take your spices, but we will give you something else, right? Remember? Somewhere else, correct? Yes, I will take your Indian spices, but in return, I'll give you something else, yeah? So is, is this what is covalent bond? That's your covalent bond, right? Barter system and let me write down here covalent bond, okay? Now let's take an example of Shreya sir, Shimon sir and Wasim sir. Let's say that Wasim sir went to Shimon sir's house, okay? And let's say that Shimon sir and Shreya sir, both of them are neighbors, okay? All right, can we do this? Let's take this example, yes? So Shreya sir and Shimon sir, they are neighbors and Wasim sir has visited Shimon sir, okay? Now, Shimon sir has to offer something. No, Wasim sir is the guest, right? So, Shimon sir is like, hey, da, you want to have some tea or what? Wasim sir says, yeah, bro, let's, you make some tea, no? And then suddenly, Shimon sir realizes that, whoa, I have no sugar in my house. I have no sugar in my house. But what did I say? Shreya sir and Shimon sir, both of them are neighbors. So, Shimon sir, he runs, okay? He, he runs in his pajamas and all. He runs to Shreya sir's house and he's like, uh, bro, uh, can you give me some sugar? So Shreya sir says, sure, take it. Now tell me something. In between neighbors, is the relationship like that, that Shre uh, Shimon sir took one bowl of sugar. Does he have to return one bowl of sugar? Will he be able to, uh, will he ever do that? He will just be thankful, like, thank you, thank you so much. Actually, Wasim has come, so I have to like, you know, make, him, make some tea and all. He would go, right? Now, in this case, Wasim sir did not even get to know that Shimon sir did not have tea. But very nicely, Shreya sir and Shimon, uh, Shimon sir, they, you know, shared, right? Shreya sir, he gave him some sugar. He went back home and he made the tea and he, you know, he gave it to Wasim sir. And Wasim sir is like, oh, very nice tea, amazing. This is your, probably, you know, from Kerala, the Munnar tea and all of it, right? Do you understand what is coordinate bond? What is happening here? Yes, so probably we can see that if I make it like this, ay, ay, ay. sorry, sorry, one second, one second. Where is Wasim sir? Wasim sir is here only in Vedanta Bacha. Very recently he took your class, no? You did not see states of matter. So let's say that there are two here, okay? And let's say that here you have the, here you have the electrons. So there will be one who will be donor and the other one will be your acceptor. In this case, we saw that Shimon sir was the acceptor and Shreya sir donated some sugar, right? Now, when these two comes together, what happens here? What happens? See, you will never get to know who is sharing what, right? The donor and the acceptor, they form a bond. And this, my dear student, is called your coordinate bond this is called as coordinate bond is this clear can i get some likes everyone if you understood this quickly yes it was shared do we understand this it was shared we understood it correct yes everybody got it great okay so you have to remember this example okay we have to remember this example now let's go let's move forward okay now let's understand that coordination compounds are really really important Without coordination compounds, we will probably not be able to have this modern inorganic and the bio-inorganic chemistry and the chemical industry that we have. Kind of impossible. Yeah, kind of impossible. Now, we will come to Alfred Werner and Werner's theory a little later. Okay, we will come to all of these little later. Now, let's try to understand that how exactly is the coordination bond or how exactly does it look? Okay. How exactly does it look? So I am again taking a blank page. I am again taking a blank page. And or you know what? Let me explain you this here. Okay. Let me explain you this here. How does it look? In any coordinate compound, you will find 
two to three things two to three things are mandatory that you will find okay now what are those things firstly you will have a central metal atom what will you have you will have a central metal atom is this useful beta uh, this is useful for everything okay this is useful for je this is useful for neat this is useful for any and every exam because in every kind of competitive exam there will be some questions from coordination compound okay so please sit back and listen to it i promise there will be some questions and you will probably able, be able to clear them okay in fact you know what i was thinking i am i want to give you at least 25 to 50 questions as your daily practice paper maybe in the next session i'll give you 25 to 50 just nomenclature questions is that okay will you all benefit from it what do you think i i think i want to do this because that will be really helpful i'll just give it to you as b quiz you can do it as assignment we will not be wasting another time but you can tell me the score later in the exam okay hello unigal hello welcome to the class priya yeah. is that okay i'm going to give you that okay i'll give you some 25 to 50 questions of just i uh, just nomenclature so just nomenclature so that you all can practice and be better at it because this is very important okay this is very important and you should be able to have all of these in your tip of tongue you should be just able to tell it okay all right anyway coming back to the coordination co coming back to this coordinate compound okay thank you so much thank you so much beta so now what is it that i say first thing is you will have a central metal atom okay now let's say that there are few other things that are bonded to it okay let's say that there are few other things that are bonded to it okay all right 1 2 3 4 5 let's let's make it 6 okay what are these what are these what are these let's call these as ligands okay these are your ligands all right now do we understand that this metal what will it be acceptor or donor what do you think ha huh? what do you think is it going to be acceptor or donor let's write it down the central metal atom the central atom okay which is a metal all right this will always be your acceptor eh hey, no 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 who said donor no it is going to be your acceptor okay this is going to be your acceptor but the ligands what they will do is they are the ones who are going to donate okay they are the ones who are going to donate so they let's call them as donors okay let's call them as donors and this bond that you see my dear student this bond that you see between the ligand and the metal between the ligand and the metal can we call this as coordinate bond of course we can this becomes your coordinate bond yes is this understood so can you have a crystal clear picture of this try and try and keep it in fact if possible sit down with a notebook so that you can write down whatever i say okay is this is this clear everyone so do we understand that this is how it is going to look like this is how it is going to look like do we understand this everyone yes okay everyone harish pavan kumar you understood you understood thank you so much unigal thank you so much yes now in this case there are few terms you have to remember okay there are few terms that you have to understand let's go to the let's go to this part here so take a look at it do you understand this see how cobalt is the central metal atom and then you have nh3 you have clc this becomes your coordination complex okay what does it become this becomes your coordination complex in fact this whole thing this whole thing that is in between this square right the square bracket that you have made whatever is in between this we call this as coordination entity is this understood this whole thing this whatever is in between this square bracket it is called as coordination entity is this clear this is your coordination entity okay now take a look at this yes take a look at this so this red part that you see right this fecn6 here this is your coordination sphere this is your coordination sphere now in a coordination compound you will always see that this is your central metal atom with the central metal atom you will also see a ligand yes so if i have to generalize it i will write it as m that is my metal then i will write it as ln that is my ligand and there is always a counter ion okay not always by the way not always i said it wrong there is not always a counter ion but sometimes there is also a counter ion is this clear yes is this clear now one more thing you have to understand 
this bond that you see, you know, this K4 and this, this counter ion and the coordination sphere bond that you see, this one is ionizable. What is it? This one is ionizable. But in this case, see, donor acceptor, donor acceptor. Now, okay. Now, just hypothetically, see, Vaseem sir from Kashmir, he traveled to Shimon sir's house, may in the southern part of India, then what is going to happen? Someday he will again get back to Kashmir, no? He will again get back to Kashmir, right? Yes. So, there is, so there is, you know, they are going to be far, far away. So, there is a break, right? There is a break. Now, if they have to maintain the friendship, maybe they will call each other or maybe one or the other time one of them can visit. But what did I say? What did I mention? Remember, I mentioned that, you know, Shreya sir and Shimon sir, what were they? They were neighbors. For them to maintain a friendship, it's very easy, right? So, here can we see? Here can we see? Shimon sir, Shreya sir, see, now these both, because they are neighbors, they're going to be really close to each other. So you can't break their bond. You can't break their bond. If you have to break their bond, you will have to take the other one very far away. Yes, so do we understand that this here, this right here is your non-ionizable. Yes, this right here is your non-ionizable bond. Am I making it clear, everyone? Yes, do I make it clear? Do I make it clear everyone? So one more time if I have to say in a coordination compound you have a metal, you have a ligand and you have a counter ion. Now this counter ion and the coordination sphere, the bond they are making it that is ionizable. You can break it because if you dissolve it in water, if you try to put it in water, this will dissociate, this will break down. Right? This will break down absolutely. But what about this FeCN6? Remember, when we dissolved this, the iron and, and the cyanide, we, we could not even see it. We could not even see it in water, right? Why? Because it was a complex. So this becomes non-ionizable. Yes, this becomes non-ionizable. Right? Now, if I have to come back to Werner's theory, if I come back to Werner's theory, listen to what Werner said. Listen to what Werner said, okay? What did Werner say? For the first time, it was Alfred Werner who formulated his ideas about the structure of coordination compounds, right? It was him. And he proposed the concept of primary valence and secondary valence. Now, what do we understand by primary valence? What do we understand by this primary valence and secondary valence? Again, taking the example, K4, F, E, C, N, 6, right? Is this the one? So, can we understand that because this will break, this is your primary valence, this is ionizable, this is ionizable, this is primary and this is your ionizable one, ionizable bond. But this right here is your secondary and non-ionizable. Yes, this is your secondary and non-ionizable. Easy, easy. Bonus theory is very easy. That's all that is said. That's all that is said. Yeah, that's absolutely what is said. Got it? Is this clear everyone? Can I have some yes, no, la la la, whatever, say something everyone? Say something? Yes? Now, from this table, you can see, again, I'll have to make myself so, small. So, take a look at it. If you have the if you have the complex COCl3.6NH3, see, group satisfy the secondary valence, yes? The non-ionizable inner coordination sphere, 6NH3. But which one is the ionizable here? It's 3Cl minus. You can see it. Yes, you can see. Is this clear? Is this clear? Very easy. Very easy, everyone. So, once again, coming to the primary valency here, see, Cl3, this is the primary valency. And here, right here is your secondary valency. Very easy, everyone. Werner's theory is clear. Werner's theory is clear, right? Now, again, coming back to the important terms, let me repeat it. What have we learned till now? We have learned about simple salts. We have learned about double salts or the coordination salts right yes double salts and coordinate coordination compounds right then we learned about what is a coordinate bond yes what is the difference between covalent and coordinate bond then we saw that how does a coordination compound looks like so once again see bonds formed due to complete transfer of one or more pairs of electron from one atom to the other is called coordinate bond right i have already cleared this i have already cleared this out isn't it yes so there is a metal atom there is electron acceptor and there are ligands which are going to donate okay which are going to donate yes which are going to donate correct is this clear everyone amazing okay amazing all right now moving on moving on from here let's take a look at the classification of ligands do you think that you can classify ligands yes now 
there are some ligands okay there are some ligands which is only one donor atom okay they have only one donor atom or we can say donor site okay let's say donor site please remember it as donor site not atom okay let's say that unidentate okay that means that there is only one donor site okay all right everyone okay now take a look at it take a look at it here this is your ligand nh3 that's your ligand yes that's your ligand can you tell me which one is the donor site? Can you tell me which one is the donor site, everybody? Any idea which one is the donor site here? Any idea which one is the donor site? Come on, come on, guys. Answer, answer, answer. Everybody answer. I don't see any answers. Hello. Very good, Kaushal. Yes, it is going to be N. See, N has the electrons, okay? N has the electron. So it's very careful, very careful, everybody. NH3 is the ligand, but the donor site is going to be N. Okay. The donor site is going to be N. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. One more example. Let's take H2O. Okay. Let's take H2O. Yes, H2O has C. H2O has these many electrons here, right here. Now, if H2O is the ligand, then who is going to be the donor site? Which is the donor site here? Come on, come on, come on, everybody. You can tell it, you can tell it. Very easy, very easy, very easy. Oxygen, absolutely right, absolutely right. So now do we understand what is the difference between donor site and ligand? Yes, ligand is this whole thing that is going to attach with the metal, but donor site is through which they are making the bond, okay? All right. So basically, if we have to learn it again, it has only one donor atom and has only one point of attachment. Okay. It coordinates with M. All right. So basically, only with one finger, they are picking up the metal. They're like, you know what, I'm very powerful. I can just pick you up with one finger. They have picked it up. Okay. But there are also multi-donate, multi, -donate, multi, -dent, multi -dentate, right? There is bidentate, there is tridentate, right? There is tetradentate, there is hexadentate, right? Everyone. So, if it is bidentate, that means with two fingers it's going to pick up, right? If it is three, then with three fingers it will try to pick up. Four, then four. Five, then five. If it is six, then six with the six fingers. But all of these bi, bi, tri, tetra, hexa, all of it, we can call it as multidentate. Can we call it as multidentate? Easy, right? Why to make our life harder and all of these we have to learn bi, tri and all of these, right? So, in the multidentate, what happens is there are two or more donor atoms and it has two or more point of attachment. Yes, it has two or more point of attachment. Coordinate with M plus at two or more sides. So, you, you see this ethylene diamine? Ethylene diamine, do you see? Yes, this is going to be, this is going to be your bidentate. Yes, because it has the N, N, there are two N. Both the N will try to attach with your Metal, right? Both the N will try to attach with your met uh, with your metal, right? They will both be coordinating here. So that is your bidentate. Understood? Understood? Yes? All right, but there is also something called as ambidentate. Now, what is this ambidentate? Ambidentate is basically something that is available sites, two or more. There are two or more available sites, but it's like, mm, you know what? I'm going to show you my power and I'm not going to use all my, all my fingers to hold you. Yes? But it coordinates with M metal at only one side. See, for example, let's say that when you just start to walk, right? When you haven't even started to walk, what does your mom and dad do? They hold you with the, they, they hold you with all their fingers and they try to make you walk, right? They try to make you walk for practice. They're like, yeah, yeah, come on, come on, come on. Come on, do it, do it, do it. Yes. Now your mom and dad, both of them have all the fingers, absolutely, right? But then you slowly, what do you do? You start to crawl and then you start to stand up also. Now you are slowly, you are, you know, putting your steps one by one, one by one. So at that time, what does your dad do? Have you seen? They only give you one finger, you hold them like this and then you start walking. It's just for a support, but it's there, right? So that's your ambidentate. Your dad and mom, they have all the fingers, but they're only going to give you one finger and they're like, hey, you know what, start walking. You can and then as you grow up even more, they're like, you know what, you're not even getting to hold two hands, you hold one hand, one finger, and let's cross the road, right? Doesn't this happen? Is this happening? Does this happen? Everybody, come on, come on, come on. Why am I not able to see your charts here? Yeah. Not able to see all the charts. So is this clear? Till here, is this clear, everybody? Huh? Happens? Yes? 
clear all righty then all righty okay all right then moving on okay now this is how this is how so you know what this coordination compounds no they also have a geometry it's 3d thing right you you can't imagine them to be 2d right they are all 3d so they have different geometries they have the octahedral they have tetrahedral they have square planar they have trigonal bipyramidal they have square pyramidal right they have all of these geometries which we will come back after some time okay we will come back to it after some time now can we do the iupac nomenclature but before this iupac nomenclature i am going to write down something here which i want you all to also to write down make a table okay make a table and even before that we also have to learn how to find oxidation number for the metal okay we will also have to find the oxidation number for the metal so first of all write down this table okay let's write down name here then let's write down formula all right then let's write down the charge and let's write down the name of the ligand all right everyone please do make a note of it okay so let's write down with um, what can we write down first what can we write water yeah let's write down water what is water water is your formula is h2o now what is the charge zero there is g zero charge in water okay you can write it down as aqua all right all right everybody now make this table everyone make this table it's going to be very 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 necessary after water let's write ammonia ammonia is what nh3 what charge does it have this also has zero charge yes you can write it as amine okay okay you can write it as amine okay all right after that are there any more zero charges no water and ammonia is enough now we write hydroxide ion okay hydroxide ion what is this this is your oh minus yes what charge does it have what charge does it have we can see that it has only minus one right so we can write it as hydroxo all right yes after that halide do you know what is halide everybody do you remember do you remember halide from the periodic uh, this thing what are the halides halides are basically chlorine fluorine bromine iodine remember yes so let's write it down chlorine bromine iodine all of it yes again what charge do they have they also have minus one charge okay so whatever it is like chloro bromo iodo yes so it is halo let's write it as halo all right yes very good Oli. very good absolutely right then we have cyanide okay what is cyanide cyanide is cn what charge does this have any idea what charge does this have everybody cn minus so again minus one okay so this will be your cyano okay this will be your cyano apart from cyano i think there are carbonato and there is sulfato and there is oxalato yes they all have minus two minus two minus two yes carbonato sulfato okay write it down carbonato carbonate carbonate it has uh, co2 minus yes it has minus two yes mark twin what happens yes 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 mark twin tell me tell me tell me minus two that is your carbonato yes all right Achha, do you notice something are you noticing something that all of these things that has negative charges all of them i'm writing o o o o have you noticed have you noticed that yes can we make this a rule then? Can we make this a rule then? Yes, during the nomenclature, I think we can make this a rule that any time you see a negative ion, you must write O, okay? You must write O at the end, all right? Got it? Yes, now let's go to the nomenclature, okay? Now let's write, go to the nomenclature. Nomenclature is very easy. First rule, everyone. First rule, okay, tell me something let's say there is a compound NaCl why are we writing it as NaCl why not ClNa why are we not writing it as ClNa tell me the example in your lower grades you have learned this tell me why is it NaCl why not ClNa what is the what is the rule that we follow there the rule that we follow there is first you write the positive ion then you write the negative ion so Na plus Cl minus same thing follow here also you write down the cation first and then you write down the negative ion understood it could also it could be the balancing ions or the coordination sphere anything 
okay <laughs> mark twain no 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 that's not the answer okay yes it is positive and then negative okay now second rule that you have is that the ligands are written first in alphabetical order if if there are more than one ligand then you will write them in alphabetical order so if i go back here take a look at it if i have ammonia and if i have cyanide also then i will write ammonia first and then i'll write cyanide right yes great okay so we understand that also and then finally you will write the metal first you will write the ligand then you will write the metal okay do not ulta it okay don't write metal first and then ligand first okay it's always ligand first then metal also you have to write them in alphabetical order and then you write the metal okay all right now if the coordination sphere is anionic okay if at all the coordination sphere let's say that here is a coordination sphere and if it has negative charge then what will you write you will write it as let's say that there is you know fe here okay let's say that fe cn 6 minus so what will i write i will write it to be as ferrate i will write it as ferrate right yes i will write it as ferrate am i clearing it am i clearing it everyone do you, do you understand this yes do we understand this come on guys say yes or no say yes or no am i making this clear that if the coordination sphere has a negative charge then you are going to mention eight okay as the suffix of the metal don't, don't write eight fer no it is ferrate okay it is ferrate okay so if the coordination sphere is cationic then the name of the metal is written as it is if it is positive then do not bother about it just write whatever is there okay all right now 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 if it is cn6 what will you write cn6 how will you write you will have to mention no, that there are six cyanides yes there are six cyano yes how will you write it di tri tetra penta hexa remember so here if it is cn6 you will have to write hexa you will have to write hexa am i clear yes getting it amazing now the fifth rule is if the ligand already has any of these prefixes in the name we use prefixes bis tris tetra kis etc to indicate the number of ligands in the compound basically what we mean is this bis tris tetra kis all of these you no know, they come with the complex ones like ethylene diamine do you remember ethylene diamine with that you will write bis tris tetra kis because di is already there do you see that in the ligand the di is already there so instead of using bi or di again what we will write bis tris, te, bis tris tetra kis getting it getting it everyone this is also clear also finally not to forget that we have to write the oxidation state of the metal in roman numericals in a bracket in a bracket all right yes do we understand this so once again everybody what are the rules the first rule is am i explaining it Meghna? are you understanding yes firstly what do we write cation first then anion first yes say it with me everybody rule two when you are writing the when you are writing in the coordination sphere what will you write you will write the ligand first then you will write the metal metal if you are if there are more than one ligand then write them in the okay then write them in the order of alphabet okay like just like how in your school no your teacher takes your attendance like arati binod yes chetna right isn't it <laughs> so just like that you're going to write it like this okay then uh, what will you do uh, yes the okay this is this all are done i i have only forgotten yeah now if the coordination sphere is an anionic state the anionic then what will you write you will write eight yes you will write eight as the suffix okay all right then we use prefixes di tri tetra etc yes and if 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 already the prefix is there if di by anything is there then we will use the uh, use the prefixes bis bis means two tris means three tetra kis means four okay all right mark twain don't spam like this sweetheart <laughs> you have to study here no what is the meaning of this i've just told you all right are you teaching in actual Vedanta platform? No, Pavan, actually, you know what? I was supposed to go to the studio, but then it started to rain so heavily. I couldn't find any auto or anything. So I'm taking it from home now. Okay, this is my home. And I had to like in OBS, I had to like put it in. Uh, I have to split the screen. Okay. All right. Yes, only absolutely right. And finally, the oxidation state of the metal is written in no, Roman numerals in parentheses after its name. Now, shall we do some exercises, everybody? I have my uh, notes here. 
Oh, one more time, one more thing. Okay. We also have to learn how to find out how to find out the uh, oxidation state. Yes. So, shall we do it? Shall we find out the oxidation state? Yes. Can we do it, everyone? Will you all be able to tell me? So, let's take an example. PtCl4. Here is 2 minus. How will you find the oxidation state? See, already the charges are also here. So, you can easily take a look at it and tell me. Yes. So, what we will do for the metal, we have to find the oxidation state of the metal. Am I right? Yes. Question. We have to find the oxidation state of the metal. So, let's write the metal to be as X. Okay. Now, there is chlorine, right? Now, we know that it is a halide. So, that means there are minus 1 charge, right? Now, minus 1 into 4. So, can I write it as minus 4? Yes. Can I write it as minus 4? Mark, I'll tell you. Bacha, I'll tell you. Yes, it will come up. Don't worry. Okay. All right. And then there is also this charge, right? There is also this charge. So, can I write it as, can I write it as minus 2 here? Now, what will I get? X is equal to minus 2 plus 4. So, that means it is equal to 2. So, can I write down? Yes, this is my oxidation state. So, now do you remember, now do you understand why do you need the oxidation state? Because while doing the nomenclature, you will have to write down the oxidation state in Roman numbers. Yes? Right, everyone? Right, everybody? Yes? Yes, Captain Jack. That we will again get, uh, that we will again, we will have to understand in, in the case of what? Balance bond theory, okay? All right, chalo, one more example. One more example. Let's do it, okay? Okay, let's take this. K3, Fe, C, N, 6. Tell me, what is the this thing? What is the this thing here? What is it going to be? Tell me, tell me. Tell me. Go ahead. What will it be? We will again take this. Yes. Now, this is slightly confusing. Many people might think that, oh, we also have to find because uh, potassium is also a metal. So, we will have to find out for potassium. No. We are only going to find it out for iron. So, iron, let's denote it with X. Then what we will do again, cyanide C, minus 1. So, that means minus 6. Yes. Then here there is plus also. So, we will write plus 3. That is equal to 0. So, what will we get? We will get X is, is equal to plus 3. Yes, X is equal to plus 3. Clear? Alright, now shall I give you some exercises everyone? Will you all do it? Will you name the compounds? If I tell you the uh, compounds, will you do it? Will you do it? Acha, one more rule is there by the way. If the ligand carrying the positive charge, if the ligand is carrying a positive charge, then you will write EM. At the end, you will write EM. Okay? You will all try? Chal. Okay then. Okay. All right, let's do this. I'm going to give you the compounds, huh? Okay, tell me. Tell me here. I'm going to write it down here. You tell me the name, okay? CO, NH3, 6, CL3. Tell me. Ha, tell me. Hi, uh, Rahman, how are you? Tell me what's the name of this. Come on. NH36, okay? CO NH36 Cl3. Tell me. What's the name? Come on, try it, try it, everybody. Try it. No, Kaushal. Kaushal, do we write the metal first? No, we write the metal later on. So tell me again. Try again, try again, everybody. This is the one that you have to find out. Guys, practice. Practice is very important. What will it be? See, there are six. So, we will write, okay, we will write hexamine, okay. Both the A you have to write. Don't, don't, don't take out one of the, this thing, okay. Do not take out the, this thing. One A do not take out. So, it will be hexamine, cobalt, Okay, I'm written, I've written cobalt. What is the uh, this thing? What is the oxidation state here? Find out the oxidation state. This will be X, right? X, then NH3. What is NH3? C, zero charge, right? So, nothing here. But there is also Cl3. So, that will be minus 3. So, X minus 3 is equal to 0. Or we can write X is equal to C, 3, right? So, I will write that in Roman here. And then what do you have to do? You will write chloride, okay? You will write chloride. That's it, easy. 
All right, do one more. Do one more. I'll give you another, uh, this thing. Another, write it down. PT, okay? NH3, 6, CL4. Tell me. What is this? What is this? Mark to end, very good. By the way, hexa, I mean, cobalt, it will be together, okay? Don't break it there. You will give a break only, um, only for the counter ion, okay? Otherwise, everything in the coordination sphere will be written together. Yes, try it out, everyone. Try it out. Write it down. What will it be? What will it be? First of all, find the coordination. So, you can see this is your metal, metal, this is your ligand, and this is your counter ion, right? Now, tell me what is the name. Come on, try it. Very good, very good, well done. Yes, it will be hexaamine. Yes, hexaamine. What will it be? Platinum. Yes, hexaamine, platinum. Yes, it will be four. Oxidation state will be four. And then we will write chlorine. Okay, chloride, sorry. Chloride, okay. All right, do we understand this? So till now, what are the things we have understood? We have understood what is coordination compound. We have understood what is a metal, what is a ligand. We have understood how the coordination bond is formed. We have understood Werner's theory. Yes, what did Werner, th Werner say? He said that there is a primary valence. There, there is a primary valence and there is a secondary valence. That means ionizable and non-ionizable bonds. Yes, we have understood all of this, correct? Is this clear? Very good, Captain. Captain, by the way, Captain Jack, one more thing. Hexaamine, there will be two A, okay? Do not miss out on the second A. Hexaamine, platinum, all together. Then write down in Roman and then give a gap, write down the counter ion. Yes, mark the way. One more, should I tell you? Okay, write down. One more, okay. I'll give you one more. Write down. Nickel, oh, I'm not, I should, I'm not saying. NiCO4. Tell me what is this? Tell me. Now tell me what is the name of this? If you want to see, see. This one is 2 minus, but otherwise neutral, okay? Yes, tell me what will it be? By the way, even if the oxidation state is zero, you must mention it, okay? You must mention it. Very good, Mark. It will be tetracarbonyl, carbonyl, yes, nickel, yes, nickel. And write down in Roman letters, zero. Even if it is zero, you will mention that it is zero. Got it? Is this clear? Do you want to do one more? Do you want to do one more? Shall we do one more? One more? Yeah, let's practice it. I think it will be great, absolutely helpful for you. Yes, nickel, nickel, yes. No, no. Oli, why did you take it out? This is inside the sphere, no, bacha? This is inside the sphere, see? This is your whole coordination sphere, see? So you are not going to write it as nickelate, no. There is no counter ion here. The counter ion is zero, but this is your whole coordination sphere, yeah? Chalo, one more I'll give you, okay? This time I'm going to give you, okay. CO, NH35, CO3, and Cl. Write down, tell me. What is it? Chalo, batao. What is it? Come on. Let's see. Oxidation state, everybody got to know, no? How to find out oxidation state because I can see that most of you are giving me the correct answer for oxidation state, okay? Ah, uh, ah, uh, Mark Twain, very good, bacha. It is what? Penta amine. Yes, penta amine. Then what? Penta amine, then? Penta amine carbonato. Yes, it will be carbo. Neto. Why are we writing carbonato first? Why are we writing oh, why are we writing amine first? Because A first, then carbonato. There are two ligands, right? There are two ligands. By the way, take a look at it. This is cobalt, this is cobalt, this is the metal, and CO. This is your carbonato. Okay. 
carbonato then we will write cobalt yes the oxidation state will be 3 you can calculate it okay and then you write chloride okay all right now let me give you another complex one let me give you another complex one okay here 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 take a look at it cobalt okay what is this en en is basically your ethylene diamine okay all right what is it it is ethylene diamine okay all right okay write it down see en en is basically a short form okay it's a short form for ethylene diamine okay so let me write en2 cl2 okay then 2 so4 write it down yes mark when write it down tell me what is this tell me what is this which one will you write first chlorido or what come on come on come on you can do it go ahead do i have anyone's answer very good oh my god mark when you seem like a you seem like a pro in this well done what will you write are you googling it out are you googling it out i hope not anyway so it will be dichlorido okay dichlorido then what we will write we will write bisethylene okay ethylene diamine all right then we will write but very good, very good, Bacha. No, I'm just kidding, okay? I'm just kidding. Don't take me seriously. Yes. Cobalt 3 and then your sulfate, okay? See, this is a very big name, no? This is a very big name, you know? There are compounds, yes? When you when you will start periodic properties, Ganesh periodic properties, so we have done it already. There are two sessions already about periodic properties. Please take a look at it. Yes? Please take a look at it. Anyway, you know, there are some compounds in which you will see that they fill two to three lines. Yes, they fill two to three lines. Yes. Anyway, in the next session, I'll give you at least 25 to 50 questions just so that you can practice. Will you all do it? I'll give it to you as B quiz. You can just click on the options and you can do it. Okay. You just click on the options and you will do it. Okay. Chal. Now we have understood all of these. Yes, we have understood IUPAC. Yes. So take a look at some of some more examples here. Some more examples, everybody. See, AG NH3 2 CL. How will we write? diamine silver one yes and chloride okay see here tris ethane one two diamine uh, no 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 this is wrong this is wrong okay this is wrong there is only chromium but there is no ethane one two diamine no forget about this okay forget about this all right yes one more compound no i think we will do it later i'll give you more okay i'll give you more don't worry i'll actually give you some more this thing don't worry about it Pakka promise. In the next class that we will do it on Monday, I will definitely give it to you. Okay. All right. Acha, tell me something. I have uh, mostly seen that uh, many students know they have uh, this thing. Do you understand the difference between bidentate and uh, bridging ligands? Let me show you an example. Sorry. What am I doing? Let me show you an example. Tell me what is when is the next class? Next class will be on Monday, okay? Tell me something. What, what is bidentate? Bidentate and uh, bridging ligands. Bridging ligands also we will have to learn, okay? Later on we will have to learn both of this. What is bidentate and what is, what is bridging ligands? Any idea? Any idea? Bidentate we know. Bidentate we know. Remember that with two fingers you are holding it. But what is bridging ligand? Bridging ligand is basically something like this. See, ligand, there will be metal and metal this is see, it's like a bridge it's like a bridge right so there is a metal here there is a metal here so you are connect coordinating with both with one ligand so that is your bridging ligand okay all right yes everyone understanding okay but bidentate is your ethylene diamine ethylene diamine is your bright bidentate isn't it en is your bidentate where there are two you know from two sides it is coordinating with the with one metal but here there are two metals and one ligand got it is this clear everybody is this clear now shall we go to balance bond theory shall we go 
bidentate ligands have two uh, donor atoms which allow them to bind to the central atom or RNA two points. Absolutely right. Absolutely right. Okay. Achha. For valence bond theory, there is something that we will have to understand. Yes. What will we have to understand? Remember this scandinium, vanadium, titanium and all of that. How will we remember it? I have found a mnemonic to remember that whole series. Okay. That whole series I have found out a this thing to remember. What will we remember it as? We will remember it as write it down my dear students. Sachin Tendulkar, Sachin Tendulkar, very crazy man, okay, all right, very crazy man, free, free coaching, free coaching, Nikhil's cousin, yes, from this, what can we understand? We can understand scandium, titanium, vanadium, Chromium, manganese, iron, cobalt, nickel, copper, and zinc. This is clear. From here we can remember it. Sachin Tendulkar, very crazy man, free coaching nickel's cousin. Okay. That is scandinium, titanium, vanadium, chromium, manganese, iron, cobalt, nickel, copper, zinc. Okay. All right. Yes. Now let's understand the postulates of balance bond theory. First things first, everybody spectrochemical series <laughs> we will do a spectrochemical series silent killer not right now but not right now okay not right now yeah not right now Achha. okay so again i'll have to make myself small so see do we understand this for this whole coordination compound to happen we know that the metal always come comes with empty hands right the metal is always like yo bro i have nothing yeah you only have to give me the lone pair of electrons i have nothing right do we understand this do we understand that this is what is the this is the mentality of the metal right so now can we also understand this that if at all the metal does not have an empty space do you understand that first it will actually make it empty first it will actually make it empty then there will be hybridization and then it will be like you know what please fill it please fill it so we always understand that the ligand is with lone pair and the metal is with vacant orbital. And then there is a ligand metal coordinate bond, right? Yes, right? Isn't it? Do we understand this? No problem, Nishchit. It's okay. It's, pro it's all right. Yes, mark, mark, bacha. I understand, but we will do that later. Right now, can we focus on this whole story, right? See, we have to understand first what is coordinate compound which we did now we have to understand something that is very important that is valence bond theory so we are going to understand valence bond theory and then maybe later on we will do whatever we have to do okay don't worry everything will be completed okay everything will be co completed i promise you that see what my plan was i told you remember in that first ask me anything that we did what did i tell you i told you that but first we will try to complete one shots Okay, first we will try to complete one shot. But then we know that this chapter is really big and one shot is, is going to be a bouncer, right? One shot is going to be a bouncer. Also, I am going to be really tired. Like this is my fourth class already. So I'm, I, I'm just waiting to like have some food, have my dinner and sleep. But I'm going to take the valence bond theory and then finish off the class. And on Monday, we will try to complete the rest half of the class. Okay, all right, first we will complete this one shot and then we will again come back and pick it up in details, okay? Then we will again come back and pick it up in details. Is that okay? All right, yes. So do we understand that the metal comes with vacant orbital always? So the metal will first make it empty, then it will hybridize it and then it will say that, hey, you know what? Oh, why don't you give me some lone pair? That's the metals, this thing, okay? No, Manoj, I am not, I'm not taking daily classes, but I think the, the timetable that we made is Monday, Friday and Saturday. I think that's the timetable, okay? So I will come back again on Monday and tomorrow I have a, a collab session with uh, Shreya sir. It's going to be a lot of fun, so do be there, okay? Please be there, okay? All right? Yes? Okay? Now, one more thing. In, in, we, we will read about the postulate a little later. Do you understand that in case of valence bond theory, there is one term that is very, very important, which is magnetic moment? Yes. Now, does anyone know what is magnetic moment? Yes. What is magnetic moment, my dear student? What is magnetic moment? Tell me. Magnetic moment, as we know, as we know that whenever, whenever a charged particle is moving, 
there will be a magnetic field around it, right? It will create, it will generate a magnetic field. Very good, Bacha. Kind of like this only caution, kind of like this, but not movement of magnets, okay? Movement of charged particles will generate an will generate a magnetic field. And that's your magnetic moment. Yes, that's your magnetic moment. Now tell me something, magnetic moment, who will give the magnetic moment? Will it be unpaired electron or will it be paired electrons? From where does it come? From where does it come? Come. Write it down. Let's write down what is magnetic moment first. Okay. Let's write it down. So we know that whenever a charged, yes, whenever, very good, very good. You guys already know everything. Yes. Then why were you, why were, why were you saying that ma'am, coordination chemistry is so tough ma'am. You have to help us. Why? Anyway, whenever a charged particle moves, what does it do? It generates or it creates whatever you want to write, okay? It generates a magnetic field and that's your magnetic moment, okay? Generates a magnetic field, all right? Yes, all right? <laughs> Tanma, tomorrow is your half yearly exam. All right, all right, okay? Yes, so do you understand this? And we also know that if there are paired electrons, if there are paired electrons, then what will happen? If there are paired electrons, then the magnetic moment will be zero. Yes, because it will always be from unpaired electrons right it will always be from unpaired electrons am i clear everybody is this clear guys is this clear now what is the formula the formula is this n n plus 2 and the root over now somebody asked me ma'am what is n what is n also this is this is the union what is n anybody who can tell me what is n here what do we mean by n Come on, somebody, Oli, Mark. Ah, you have already written, very good. A N is alphabet, wow, 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 clap for yourself, clap for yourself. What is N? N is unpaired electrons, okay? Yes, number of unpaired electrons, okay? Number of unpaired electrons. N is number of unpaired electrons, great, amazing. Now, so do we also understand that, ah, yeah, I have written on top of it. I've written. Guys, have you noted this down already? Please, have you noted this down? Please write it down so that I can move on. Okay. Magnetic moment. Yes. Number of unpaired electrons. Okay. N is number of unpaired electrons. Okay. Have you all noted it down? Shall I, shall I rub it off? Shall I rub it off? Otherwise, we will not be able to see the next point. Shall I rub it off, guys? Come on. Give me a thumbs up or everything. No? So, give me a thumbs up or something at least you give me. Noted. Okay. You know what? Let's take examples. I think that's better. Anna? Let's take examples. All of these we will understand in, a, in, in some time. Let's take the examples first. Okay. Example is FeCN6 4 minus. Okay. If it is 4 minus. Okay. If it is 4 minus. Now tell me. Okay, first tell me what is the what is the atomic number of ion? Tell me. Root of n n n plus two. Root n n plus two. N n plus two. Singham n n plus two. What is the uh, atomic number of ion? Anybody? Yes. What is it? We I just taught you. Remember? Yes. Sachin Tendulkar, very crazy, very crazy man. Free coaching. Nikhil's cousin. Yes. So that is from twenty three. Yes. Uh, very good. It is 26. Great, great. 26. Okay. Now, if it is 26, if it is a 26, how about let's write down how many unpaired electrons will it be? How many unpaired electrons will there be? Uh, write it down. Yes. Also, if it is 4 minus, you are understanding which state it is in. Yes. Who is that 36A? Mark, it's not 36. It's 26. Yes. All right. So, you see. Here you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, right? If it is 26, if it is 26, then what will it be? This is your plus 2 state, right? It is your plus, plus 2 state, right? At plus 2 state, what will, it, what will happen? At plus 2 state, you will see that iron will have, okay, normally, in a, in a normal state, in normal ground state, okay? In normal ground state, what is the, what will you have? You will have 3D, yes? What will you have? You will have 3D6, 4S2. Am I clear? See? 
3 d 6 4 s 2 now if i put it in the plus 2 state what will happen i will only have 3 d 6 am i clear i will only have 3 d 6 is that also clear right everybody clear ha very good you are already done now what we are going to do is now instead of keeping it like this see in the in the plus 2 oxidation uh, in sorry in the plus 2 state yes in the plus 2 state what do we have i will remove this right i will remove this 4s will remove 4s will remove i have already removed it from s block now what i will do is instead of keeping all of them unpaired why don't i pair them i can also pair them right why don't i take this here and why don't i take this here i can pair them right now if i pair them then what am i getting what am i getting i am getting 1 2 3 4 5 6 i'm getting 1 2 3 4 5 6 right so that means that remember the hybridization what will be what, what will it be what will it be it will be sp3d2 yes sp3d2 these are the rooms that i need these are the rooms that i need so sp3d2 yes so cn do you see cn is taking all of these cn is taking all of these yes correct cn is taking all of these rooms right everyone I had to empty this, I had to empty these, right, empty this and I had to give it to CN, right, yes, come on in, you come on in and you fill it. So CN has come in and CN has filled it, right. Now from here, I see that it is SP3D2 but instead of writing SP3D2, because I see that D, it is N minus 1, it is D2, so let me write it down as D2 SP3 hybridization. Can I write it as D2SP3 hybridization, everyone? Are you understanding, guys? Take a look at it. Then we will learn the postulate. Everything will be clear. Can, can I write it as D2SP3 hybridization? Because, you know, N minus 1 it is. This is N minus 1. Clear? Hello. Are you all sleeping? <laughs> Don't tell me you are all sleeping. It's D2SP3 hybridization. Now, D2SP3 hybridization, what shape will it form? It will be octahedral complex. And because we are taking the n minus 1, that means it is inner orbital. That means it is inner orbital. Yes? Correct, everyone. So, is this clear? Is this clear? Now, let's go to the postulate. Now, let's go to the postulate. Now, now let's try to understand this. Okay? Take a look at it. See. So, vacant orbitals of metal should have equal energy. Right? We want equal energy in the vacant orbital. Now, metal, the metal can use either N minus 1 D, N, S, N, P, which we saw, 3 D, 4 S, 4 P orbitals. Did we see this? We saw this, right? We saw this right now with F, E, F, E, C, N, 6, we saw this. Or there is another possibility that is N, S, N, P, N, D orbitals. Are you getting it? Yes, for hybridization. To form equivalent orbit, orbitals of definite geometry, we either need n minus 1 d ns and n, p orbitals or we need ns, n, p and n, d orbitals, right? Yes? Right, everybody? Now, now, when do we have inner orbital? When there is n minus, we, we, just, we just saw it, right? 3 d, so n minus 1 orbital, when it is used for hybridization, we will have inner orbital complex where there will be low spin complex. Yes, when there will be low spin complex. But if it is the outer orbital complex, that is you are using ND orbital, is used for hybridization, you will have high spin complex, right? You will have high spin complex. Now let's take a look at this table. So if there is coordination number 4, for coordination number 4, there can be two types of hybridization, either sp3 or it can be dsp2. If it is sp3, then it will be tetrahedral and if it is dsp2, then it will be square planar, okay? And then it will be square plan. Now, can I tell you a trick? You can remember this if at all there are, you know, if at all there are questions like this, then please remember this for coordination number four, okay? If it is, if, uh, okay, all right, let me write it down here. This is a trick that you can remember, okay? If coordination number is four and you will have to find out what? You will have to find out the number of unpaired electrons and maybe the magnetic moment. Right? If you find that the magnetic moment and the unpaired electrons are matching, matching, yeah, are almost same, okay, then you will have, then you will have tetrahedral, okay, then you will have tetrahedral. But if you see that the magnetic moment and the unpaired electrons are not really matching, in fact, it is less than what you expected, then you make it as square planar. Write it down. 
now without actually going through calculations and everything without making the whole notes and without drawing the diagram and everything you can easily find it out right what will be the shape what will be the geometry easily find it out you just have to find number of unpaired electrons the magnetic moment and that's it done easy easy right everyone yes just with two formulas you can find it out now if we have coordination number five then the types of hybridization and hybridization is sp3d that is trigonal bipyramidal if it is six then it will be sp3d2 then it will be octahedral or if it is six it can also be d2 sp3 that is also octahedral right that is also octahedral yes these are the different geometry am i making myself clear everyone is there anything that you are not able to understand yes singham you're right yes are you understanding or do you need to repeat myself for anything anything that you want me to repeat anything that you want me to repeat yes ma'am kaushal i'm not understanding yes ma'am to what you want me to repeat or are you able to understand this again tell me yes ma'am repeat or yes ma'am got it <laughs> i am confused now looking at your yes ma'am yes ma'am understood huh okay all right yes now this balance bond theory why do we have to study it why are we wasting our time are we wasting our time no we are not wasting our time because this can actually explain the geometry of complex and it can also explain the magnetic property of complex okay it can it can explain two things the magnetic property of complex either the either the uh, you know the complex will be diamagnetic or it will be paramagnetic and we can also understand the geometry the geometry we have already understood clear yes if there are unpaired electrons present it will be paramagnetic if there are no unpaired electrons present it will be diamagnetic right yes it will be diamagnetic now one more thing bachcha if you see that the magnetic moment is one point something please write down number of unpaired electrons one magnetic moment two point something it will be two let me ask you a question let me ask you a question let's say that the magnetic moment is 3.82 how many number of unpaired electrons do we have how many number of unpaired electrons do we have Ch tell me tell me the answer let me ask you a question here tell me if i say that the magnetic moment is 3.82 yes what will be the number of unpaired electrons very easy one word you can tell me the answer go ahead come on come on come on come on come on very good yes it will be three absolutely right very good yes so from here we can easily understand this if it is 4.8 right four if it is 5.91 five bus very easy right so this example we have already understood right we have already understood now do you see that octahedral inner orbital now what is it do we do you see any unpaired electrons do you see any unpaired electrons then is it going to be paramagnetic or diamagnetic since there are no unpaired electrons it will be diamagnetic right it will be diamagnetic isn't it easy very easy sorry diamagnetic i have written it will be diamagnetic yes it will be diamagnetic now let's take another example nicn4 minus cn4 two minus okay so uh, once again yes now nickel this time is in your nickel is in plus 2 state So write it, make it for here. What what will you have? You will have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yes, it is three D three D eight four S two. Correct. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Right. Three D eight four S two. Okay. Now what will we do? In plus two state, in plus two state, what will happen? Four S will be empty. Yes, four S is empty. Right. There are four. There are C N four. So what do I see? What I can do is I can shift it here. i can shift it here now the moment i shift it here i get to see that all of them are paired right all of them are paired and cn comes and takes this 1 2 3 4 now what is this hybridization what is this hybridization it is d s p 2 right so d s p 2 hybridization means what is the shape it will be square planar it will be square planar yes and if it is square planar and since we see that there are no unpaired electrons again this is also diamagnetic am i making that clear am i making myself clear is valence bond theory understood valence bond is also easy 
Balance bond is also easy. Now I have a question for you. Can I give you a question? My question is tell me which of the following has tetrahedral geometry? Find it out everyone. Which of the following has a tetrahedral geometry? Tell me. Find it out for all of these. We already know that for tetrahedral geometry, what do you need? You need coordination number four, right? So that means either this, this and this. This we have already, we just saw that it has square planar. So that means this is also gone. So your only options are option B or C. Option, sorry, option B or D. Find it out. Out of option B or D, which one do you think is the answer? Tell me. Out of B or D. Singham, I already cancelled option A, right? We just saw na? NICL4. This one has what? Square planar. We just solved it. This has square planar. All right. So either it is option B or it is option D. Now find it out and tell me. Kaushal, how did you solve it? Balu is telling me B. Captain Jack is still telling me C. C cannot, C is not possible, bacha. We need coordination number four. For tetrahedral geometry, we need coordination number four. So C, how is it possible? It is not possible. C is not possible. Tell me. Some of you are telling me B, some of you are telling me D. How did you solve it? Now tell me. How did you solve it? How did you do it, Singham? Tell me. Okay, I, I, I can take any of your answer, but you tell me how did you do it? Yes, Singham, how did you do it? How is it that D is the answer? How did you figure out? How did you figure out? Tell me. Hmm? D is the answer. First S block electron should be removed. Great. Yes. All right. Okay. If I remove the S block, then what will I have? I will have. I will have this, right? I will have it like this. One second. Let's do it. See? I'll have it this. I will not touch the D at all, right? Yes, I will only remove the S block. I will not touch it at all. Yes, I will not touch it at all. Now, if I do not touch it at all, then what will I get? Then I will have to fill. See, I have un unpaired electrons. I'll have unpaired electrons. So, I will take SP3. I will take SP3. Very good. Mark Twain, you are doing great. I will get SP3. And because of SP3 hybridization, what will happen? I will get tetrahedral complex. Yes, I will have tetrahedral complex. Bus, that's it. Okay, so can we stop here today? I have already taken a one and a half hour of class, almost one and a half hour. Yes, it's what one hour and 20 minutes class. I am also tired right now. It's about to be 10 o'clock. I think you all should also take a break. Yes. Acha, by the way, one more thing. Tell me, is this inner orbital or outer orbital? One, one last question I want to ask you. NiCl4 2 minus. Is this inner orbital or outer orbital? Tell me. Tell me, is this inner orbital or outer orbital? Come on, guys. Come on, come on, come on. Anybody? Did we even touch the inner orbitals? Hey, how? How are we touching the inner orbitals? We are not, right? See, 4s, 4p. No. Hey. It's 4s, 4p, bacha. it's outer. Okay, it's outer. If it is n minus 1, then it becomes, then it becomes inner orbital, right? This will be outer. Don't you remember? Let me show you here again, okay? Let me show you here again. See, take a look at this. Where did it go? Yes, see? Inner, n minus 1d orbital. When 3d is used for hybridization, it will be inner. If it is outer ND, all right, or, you know, if you're not using it also here, because 4S, 4P, then you can use the outer 4D empty, that is right. So, it will be outer, okay, it will be outer, all right. So, guys, I think I will stop here today, yes. You should also take a break, it's 10 o'clock already. Try to just revise whatever I have taught you today and sleep. In the next class, we will do it from crystal field theory, okay, all right. Oh, I'm so sorry. Nihar Teja, actually you can do AI live anytime you want, okay? 
you can do AI live anytime you want. Mark Twain, sweetheart, I'm really hungry right now. I'm really hungry. And I have been taking class since afternoon 12 o'clock. Like my body is not functioning anymore. Okay. So we will do from crystal fill theory on Monday. Okay. On Monday, we will complete the crystal fill theory and whatever everything is left, we will complete all of that. Okay. All right. Is that okay? Cool. Sure. Then I'm going to take a take a goodbye from you yes bye bye everyone good night study this once and also on monday i'll take it from the studio so that even the class looks a little better this way it's just too congested i don't even get writing space on the slides and everything so we'll do it okay on monday on monday pakka all right yes veg or non-veg today in your home uh i think today is a veg oh no there is fish so non-veg yeah all right Thank you, Sandhya. Thank you so much. Do read it once. Okay. Chalo. Bye-bye. See you, everybody. Good night. Tata. Tata. Bye-bye. Yes. Thank you, Kaushal. Thank you so much. Yes, please. You should. 